Hey, how's everybody doing today? Back again. Okay, I have had a couple more weeks to spend with the headset, the Varro. I call it Varro Arrow. And I just wanted to give an overview on how things have gone with it so far and some of my thoughts on it. And so far, this has really worked out to be like awesome product. I mean, it's expensive, but you definitely pay for, you know, you're paying for what you get. And to get this kind of quality, you're going to pay high money. Other than the Primax Crystal or any of the versions of this, like the, um, I guess they call it the XR 1, 2, and 3 or whatever. They're kind of a mixed reality type headset. This is just VR. So yeah, the prices definitely get way up there with them other ones. So yeah, these, the, the, I guess the Crystal in this one pretty much like top tier type products. I don't know much about the Apple thing that just came out, but probably a good product. I, I like Apple products. So as far as build quality on this, it's held up fine. I mean, I've only had it now maybe a month. I've had it a couple of weeks to get to play around with it and stuff. And if you're gonna get a headset and get into VR, what I did is I, oh my God, I put the thing on, I did a few adjustments, I jumped in the game and I was like, oh my God, this looks horrible. I, I really thought it was just gonna be like going into something that just like, wow, blew me away. So it'll get there, but what you need to do is really, all right, let's step back first. I, I started talking about build quality and I, like I said, the headbands on it are awesome. We're gonna talk about the sound in a minute, but the way it fits, and this is with var Vario, Vario, whatever people call it, spent a lot of time that other headset companies don't is the comfort that goes into this. And the way this top strap is hooked up, the back, it just relieves all the pressure going down on your neck, your shoulders, and it just, you don't even know it's there. The field of view on it, once you're in the game, like I know there's a lot of talk about like the Primax Crystal, it does have a big field of view. You can tell that it's big just by how wide that thing is on your head. But I don't even know if that's really relevant. Once you get in and you're in the game, peripheral vision doesn't become like a huge part of this type of game. A flight simulator, you're looking where you're looking. And that's what the most important thing is, is, is having good clear focus on the area that you're looking at, especially if you're dropping bombs, you're looking for planes, and you do get that with this. So foveated rendering is pretty much what bring what this brings to the table. It's the type of lenses that are on this, they're called aspheric lenses. Some of the lower end models, which still give great video, have what they call pancake lenses. There's another type of lens in between, and then you have the aspheric, which is probably like, I would think what the big main companies are using. I imagine the, the Primax Crystal, that's what they're using. With that technology, basically when you're looking at an area, it allows, I don't know if it's color, pixels, Anyways, it pulls from those areas. You don't notice like everything get blacked out or blurry or anything like that, but it just takes away some from there and adds it into the area you're looking at and makes it crystal clear. It's crystal clear as you can imagine. I can look down at the joystick and I can see every little scratch. I can read every little letter, number, digital display. Every, everything's there. It, it's just incredible. But when you first get this, you're not going to just put it on and you're going to see all that. First step is you got to watch a bunch of videos and you got to do a bunch of reading because when you get into it, you have your Windows video settings, you have your Windows settings, there's things that need to be turned up like the performance mode, where you assign your video cards, so on and so on. Now, I'm not a big expert on VR, so I'm just giving a little overview on my experience with this so far. But once you get in there, that's what you're going to do is go over those settings. You want to get rid of like V-Sync. That's really, that doesn't work well with this. In the game, you want to get rid of like bloom effect. You want to make sure your text textures are set higher and like bloom effect and all that stuff really does a number on frames. Clouds too. Now, some people like their clouds in high setting because they really do look nice. I don't, I, I kind of keep my settings on clouds low. My frame rate in the game when I'm in the air is normally depending on how busy things are. Uh, it's between 75 to 90. When I'm up higher, smooth 90. It's never dropped any lower, I don't think, than 70 for me at this point. Well, except for when I first got it. It was like horrible. I was getting like 35, 40. But like I said, as you learn, you work your way through it. Now, one of, one of the things that I recommend that people get for this right off the get-go, get yourself a good set of eye lens protectors. If you scratch those lenses and they're easily scratched, 
if you're cleaning it using one of those little cleaning cloths and there's a little something on it and you scratch the lens, you are screwed. So you want these protected because I'd rather replace $45 um, of lens protectors than thousands of dollars worth of built-in lenses. I don't even know if you can get them replaced. If you can order them and put it in yourself, I, these are very hard to open up. They, they're not made to just be open up and work on. It would probably have to be sent back to the factory. So onward. The design of the headset is made for comfort. The price you pay for this is the clarity that you get in the game. The game itself, or any of the games, once you have this VR type game all, all tuned in, is, is you're just gonna be blown away. I, I just don't know any other way to put it. It's just incredible. It only runs, well, I don't wanna say only, but this headsets that run higher, but this has a 90 hertz refresh rate, so, yeah, 90 hertz, so you can't really get more than 90 FPS. Some of the other ones go to 120. I've seen some go to 144. But if you can get 45 to 90 frames in any game, it should run pretty smooth. 45 is a little bit low. If you have a decent computer, and you're going to need a decent computer. My, my computer is all water-cooled CPU and GPU. I have a 7950X with a 4090, the MSI water-cooled version. And... Even there, I can't keep a 90 FPS all the time. I know some people say they do. I, I don't know how, but on the ground, it, it's pretty difficult, especially if you're online. That does make a difference or if you're playing training missions or instant action. In, in single player mode, you're definitely gonna get the best FPS. There's plenty of missions to buy. I use Steam, so I tried messing around with the third party application of OpenXR. Now, they have, Steam has implemented OpenXR into their whole application. So you do get it. Now, I don't know if it's anything like the third party one. I tried using it. I didn't see much of a difference. I think the name of the person that made it is M. Butcher. And a lot of people, it's really benefited. He, I, the guy is very intelligent to be able to come up with that application. You basically have to download the Windows OpenXR application and then use his third-party software. And if you're using the non-Steam version, you need to add something to the extension. A little bit of work. I ended up cleaning it all out. I didn't use any of it. I just used what came with this. Did a lot of tweaking and I'm very happy with the performance it's given me. Crystal clear, bought on, smooth. I, I couldn't ask for more. Everything on this, like I said, is quality from the USB-C cable, the head straps. Okay. So other than the lenses, the headset, how it fits, it, it just everything's just so well made. My biggest gripe with this is it comes with basically no sound whatsoever. Well, I shouldn't say no sound whatsoever. It comes with a 3.5 millimeter jack. I tried adding a headset into this uh, um, for a microphone with a splitter. I couldn't get it to work. It's a 3.5 millimeter. So this headset comes with basically this. These are really cheap. I mean, it, it's something to start with. It will get you by, but the sound is very tinny. It's not very good. And the microphone on it is built in here somewhere. It doesn't work well at all. I'm not even sure. Maybe it's built into the headset somewhere. I don't know where it's built in, to be honest with you. I see a couple little holes at the bottom. I don't know if that's for ventilation. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But anyways, that could be where the speakers go through. I mean, the microphone. So we'll throw that aside. I wasn't impressed with that sound whatsoever, so I ended up buying the VR ears. You can get them on Amazon, which you're gonna pay a lot of money. I would go directly to the company's website that makes the VR ears. Uh, what is it, Re Rebuff, something like that? Not really sure on the name right now. I didn't bring it up. Maybe I'll put it in the description down below. If you put in VR ears, you'll find it. They run sales. I seen them for $24.99, which was an awesome price. And I also seen them for like $120 on other sites. Newegg was really up there. Amazon was, I think, like $89. So what, the sound is great. These are off the ear. I'm very happy with the sound. When you first get them, or you get any type of... I, I never realized there was a breaking in period. So once I heard about that, I basically put these on a loop, powered them on, and I let them run till the battery was dead. Then I charged it and did it over again. And I did it over again like three times. And the speakers, the sound on it got so much better. It cleared up. It comes with a built-in microphone. It's a 2.5 millimeter jack. I've really never seen one at a 2.5. It looks like the 3.5 plug, but it's a 2.5. So it's a little bit thinner. I ordered from the company that makes these. And I, put it, I couldn't get it working. 
I went over and over and over. So I thought maybe the mic was bad. I ended up going online. I found a different microphone with a 2.5 millimeter jack that was identical. I plugged it in. It wouldn't be seen in my Discord chat. It wouldn't work on my Windows. I couldn't get it working at all. So I talked to the company and explained everything going on to them. And they kept telling me, send us pictures, send me video. I, I told them, what? do you want me to send you a video of? Showing that it's not working? I, I mean, what sense does that even make? It's not there. I can't send you a video of something that's not there. It's not working. I even went as far as to take the screws out of the back. I opened it up looking there because I was thinking maybe there was nothing for it to plug into, but there is. So I don't know where or what I did wrong. Maybe I did. But anyways, long story short, I had a headset like the operators use with a microphone on it that was broken, sitting in a box. So I kind of cannibalized it. I, I cut the piece off that goes right here that you can see. I cut that metal piece off and I had a sign, a, was it Seinhauser? USB-C microphone that I just used a little bit of hot glue and I kind of set this up and I used a little hot glue to stick it on the middle of that speaker. It didn't damage it. I can, if I want, I can take that, twist it. I can get this, work it off without messing with these speakers. It won't damage them whatsoever. I kind of just tacked it on. I put the mouth, the, uh, I guess you want to call that a, a windshield or whatever they call it. It takes care of like P's and S's and stuff like that. We're not going to get into sound quality because I'm really not big on that stuff. But I hooked it up, fired up Discord, tested it on my Windows chat. Thing works awesome. Talking to my buddy yesterday, he's like, oh my God, he's like, what microphone are you using? It sounds crystal clear. When I told him, hey, it's a sign house, I mean, it's top of the line. I can't even remember what I paid, maybe 70 bucks for this mic. I have like four of them. I have a Shure, I have a couple different ones. So I figured I'll just throw it on, test it out. Worked out great. I took it. I know it's nothing fancy, but hey, I can stick it up, pull it down, nice and clear. I ran the cable right around, attached it to this one. It sits right on its little peaceful stand over there and it's happy. So why I couldn't get that speaker, why I couldn't get that mic where I even, like I said, I bought a splitter and I went separate. This into the splitter, one was for speaker, one was for microphone. Now, it was the identical splitter to the one that comes with them little earbuds. I still couldn't get the mic working. The sound worked great. The speakers, the mic didn't. So I, I don't know. Maybe there's something in the app or in Windows I need turned on, but I mean, as far as getting my, I have a sure, what is that, the XM7 or something like that? Podcast mic, <clears throat> excuse me, podcast mic with the um, Elgato Wave. Sound works great on that. I have other headset, like the Logitech headset that I use. Sound works great on that. Speakers work great on that. Mic works great. So I am baffled with that. I have no idea why I can't get it to work through this. I'm starting to think it's not rebuff. The VR is. Maybe it's something to do with the headset, why the microphone doesn't work. But then again, that doesn't make sense because when I use the earbuds with that little built-in mic, it works fine. Or maybe it's got to be made just from them. I, I, I have no idea. But anyways, problem solved. I know it's not fancy, but let me tell you, it sounds sweet. And that's very important is having good, clear voice over the internet when you're talking to a teammate. People really need to hear what you're saying, especially in a game like that. If you've got somebody on your six or somebody is under you and they're coming for you, you need to know what's going on. I get it, it's a game, but some people take things serious than other. So all in all, I've really enjoyed these. Be, per be prepared when you get a headset like this, or any headset, to get it looking nice, it's gonna take time. I'm two weeks into just tweaking things, and I still think maybe with some updates, it's gonna look better. I've got some more tweaks to do. I haven't even tested half the settings in the DCS game. So far, I haven't even been running. I thought it looked better with no DLSS and some different ones. I'm gonna go run through them again and see what works. Maybe mess with the colors. When you get this headset, doesn't work great. VR doesn't work great with like reshade. Not for me, it didn't. I ended up removing it. Any of those third party apps, it didn't work good with these. So <clears throat> yeah, I ended up taking that out. Now that DCS has its own built-in color filters. Reshade's really something, I mean, I, there's a lot you can do with reshade, but for me, I really, I don't need it no more. Actually, I haven't even used any of the tweaks in the game yet, so I'm not really even sweating that. So all in all, great experience, great headset. I know in 2025, 
they're gonna stop supporting. Varial's gonna stop supporting this headset, which is kind of a bummer. But it doesn't mean that the headset's gonna stop working. By the end of 20, or by the beginning, I don't know if it's the beginning or the end of 2025, they should have, it's already been a few years, so I think pretty much all the bugs that are out to work out are pretty much worked out. The rest is up to like, what is the next series video card gonna do in like the NVIDIA 50? Cause this won't work with AMD. It only works with NVIDIA cards. I don't know if it works with an Intel card. That's yet to be seen. So I imagine when the 5090 comes out, this thing's really gonna crank. It'll probably get 90 FPS around the clock. Cause I heard the 50 series from what I've been reading up on it is gonna be a killer video card. I know the 40 series was a huge jump from the 30 and 30 was a pretty intense card. So a little history on that, a little history on the headset, a little bit of history on this. I'm very happy with how everything's worked out so far. I really enjoy it. I'm gonna wrap this video up and I'm just gonna let you know that if you do go VR, don't expect miracles when you first put it on, but you might have a nice little miracle install after a couple weeks of tweaks. Give it time, don't be impatient because you're gonna need that time to work on things. And every time there's an update, it's gonna cause things to change. NVIDIA update, Windows update, whatnot, it's gonna ca cause things to change. Windows is gonna stop supporting Windows Mixed Reality. Why? I have no idea. A lot of people are really bummed about that. But my way of looking at it is, if they're gonna stop supporting that, maybe they're working on something in the back that people with Mixed Reality is still gonna be able to use. But it's gonna be a better technology. Let's hope so because a lot of people spent a lot of money on headsets and if they can't use it because Windows next big update is gonna stop supporting Windows Mixed Reality, that really sucks. I know in the overall picture, VR is a small part of the Windows world, but come on, you know, Microsoft, people still got a lot invested into it. Give them a break. Make sure there's some type of update for them. The solve for it is turn your automatic updates off. Kind of bummer for all the securities updates and stuff. Maybe there's another workaround that you can download those separately, but that's what you'll have to do. I think it's, what is it, the 24H, the next big update coming out later this year. 24H and a bunch of numbers. If you have Windows Mixed Reality, shut your Windows update off prior to that. Are you going to lose it? Are you going to have to back your system up to 10 or go to an earlier version of 11? That's all there is to it. At this point, that's all I can say on that. All right, time for me to hit the road. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you people. I want to give a special thanks to all my sponsors and special thanks to all of the people that watch my videos, all of my subscribers. You guys are awesome. I couldn't do it without you. And we're going to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.